You're watching Fishmonger Jim. Nice. Well, howdy, y'all. Today I'm going to be making uh, smoked tuna. Smoked tuna and some, I have some smoked, or, well, it's not smoked yet. I have some tuna here, yellowfin tuna, fresh yellowfin tuna caught three days ago. Um, and then I have some wahoo as well. We're going to be putting that on the smoker. Not today. Got to make the brine today. Uh, hang on a second. So I have here about, well, that's probably three pounds of tuna. And then I have some wahoo, some fresh wahoo. This was all caught three days ago by, uh, Master Captain Mayor Scott. I'm fishing, fat boy. Why'd you go grow some hair? On the, uh, on the fishing boat. Which, to which I have not been invited to go working on for the tuna trips. But next year, maybe next year. Um, yeah, Wahoo. I have a half a gallon of water, cold water here, cold fresh water. I have about a, uh, just over half a cup of salt. Five-eighths to be exact. And then, uh, so the salt to sugar, you want twice the amount of salt uh, as sugar. The sugar I have just over a quarter cup. Uh, ground cloves, bay leaves, allspice, and black peppercorns. The only other spices you need or seasonings that you need for a, a smoked fish brine, the best smoked fish brine that I've found in 38, 40 years of doing this compulsively, garlic and ginger. Gonna, I'm going to rough chop or kind of fine chop the garlic, julienne the chin, ginger. I'll be right back when I get that done. So I never measure the uh, the spices, but the sugar and salt is, uh, like I said, it's, it's the most important part of this whole process is to get the sugar and salt right. A two to one ratio of sugar to salt. If you add too much salt, the fish will be too dry. If you add too much sugar, if you, if you ignore this advice, in other words, um, your product won't be won't be right. It'll be either too soft or too hard, too salty. If you want it sweeter, you can always put a uh, glaze on it as it's smoking. But if you add too much sugar, it uh, the fish will be way too soft and moist, not smoked fish like. Uh, the cloves, normally I use the, the ground or the, uh, the hole and just bust them up a bit, but I don't have them. I don't know what happened to them, but I don't have them. Uh, that is, uh, that's a teaspoon. Probably that's a tees teaspoon. Right? Yeah, that looks good. The allspice berries, I'm going to crush them up, but we're going to use about, uh, that much, about a teaspoon again. I'll crush them up after. Uh, bay leaves. Probably three. There's two. Uh, a third. Crush them up a bit, not too much. It's going to be in here for uh, a day at least. And then the black pepper, about a teaspoon again. I'm not going to grind it here on uh, on camera, but you get the idea. A teaspoon of fresh ground black pepper, coarse. Oh, there you go, the allspice berries. And then uh, the ginger and garlic. That's a lot. That's a lot of each. The... Uh, Tuna's got kind of a strong flavor, so I'm going to add all that in there. Normally, I probably wouldn't. I probably wouldn't add all that in there at once, but it's uh, it'll hold up well to it. Like I said, stronger flavor. I guess I'll crush these on the board here.
That's all you need. Just a frying pan. Now, already, this mixture it smells amazing. It smells like smoked fish. Crazy. Crazy. Probably need a little bit more ground cloves. That was three quarters of a teaspoon that I added before. Now, now that's a teaspoon. All right, and then uh, we'll stir that in there for a second. I'll give it a taste. Make sure the salt, the salt to sugar ratio is good. Uh, traditionally, if you were using this to preserve the fish. You would want to add, you would want to do your salt and sugar mixture, mix the two together and get them very, uh, very uniform in uh, terms of distribution in one container. Then uh, add your fish to the, to the liquid and then add enough of that mixture until the fish floated. And that would be uh, as a means of preservation. This is more or less just a flavoring at this point because we do have refrigeration. It's not... It's not for uh, preservation necessarily, although it will last a lot longer. Once it is smoked, depending on the salt concentration, you can get at least two weeks out of out of uh, you know a properly brined and smoked. If it was brined and smoked for preservation in the refrigerator, you could say you could use it. You could you could keep it for for a month. In my estimation. In my experience, that's pretty good on the black pepper. Yeah, that's it. It's the smoked fish brine. Um, and we will just go ahead and add our fish. Hopefully, I didn't overestimate the uh, the amount of water. We're gonna cut the dark meat out. Try to cut that in half too, because it'll take less time to smoke. Yeah, these were uh, caught on the, the boat that I was working on this summer. Uh, Master Captain Mayor Scott, I worked for him uh, a couple days ago. Um, and yeah, I'm so sore from it still, from working. He paid me in cash and tuna. <laughs> almost like he knows me. It's almost like he knows me. Uh, we'll have to get rid of some of this water, but that's basically it. We're going to leave that in the fridge uh, for today. I got to go cut fish, and then uh, tomorrow we'll smoke it, and I'll show you how to do that in a minute. Okay, so it's been uh, probably, what, 29 hours, 30 hours, something like that, and they are all ready to be smoked. You got to let them sit in the brine at least 12 hours. Uh, you could make a stronger brine, I, just, I expect, and uh, not leave them in as long. Stronger in terms of salt, uh, salt and sugar. So we're going to take the, uh, the tuna and the wahoo out of the brine and put it on some paper towels and run the fan on it. The fan is uh, going to... We, we want to reduce the moisture content of... The product that's going to extend the shelf life of it and one thing i didn't mention that um when i was processing this tuna when i was cutting it and whatnot this is a really really fatty uh tuna tuna steaks they're really fatty this would have been a, a sushi uh, delight sushi grade tuna big time so it's going to take a while to, to cook compared to the wahoo, as the wahoo is uh, going to be leaner than the tuna, which is, you know, a mackerel being leaner than a tuna is kind of uh, unheard of, but is what it is. It's going to be a really, really, really good smoked fish as a result of being so uh, fatty. So yeah, we'll put this out on the paper towel. We'll run the fan on it every you know seven to ten minutes we'll uh come and pat the surface of it off and i'll show you the difference after i get it set up and we start running the fan on it and you'll be able to see the difference in 
the the uh, the what is it called the tactility the uh, the tackiness yeah the tackiness of the top of the steaks or the fillet or whatever it is you're doing you'll be able to see that it's ready or it's not ready and this is a step that you know I don't I don't I don't skip it I actually don't skip it it's a little bit tedious but it does give you a uh, a much better product somehow there we go it's all it's like I said we'll plug the fan in get that rolling and every 15 minutes we'll come along and do like that look at that probably wait for it half hour total wait for it so I only just put these just turned the fan on I just wanted to give you a uh, you can see how wet that looks and it's quite slippery especially the tuna with the high fat content so I'll show you this you know I, I don't need to show you me doing it each time I'll show you this again when I think it's done when I think it's ready to go on the grill and speaking of the grill I'm gonna go fire up the grill with uh, hardwood lump charcoal uh, normally I would use a Weber grill for this you can use whatever it's the same principle I like the Weber grill because the dome design really uh, circulates the smoke in um, proper fashion in my opinion uh, yeah let's get that going and uh, I'll show you this at the end All right so it's been about 30 minutes and it's tacky you know, it's it's uh, it's a little bit slippery because of the uh, the fat content of the tuna, that the really high fat content of the tuna. But like even the wahoo is just it's sticky. So yeah, ready, it's ready to go. I said it's probably 30 minutes. It's been on the under the fan for 30 minutes. So the uh, the grill, the charcoal is ready to go. Let's go ahead and put some some soaked wood chips yeah. uh, the wood chips that I'm using are mesquite uh, cherry and apple uh, normally I wouldn't use the mesquite it's got a real strong flavor but that's what I have um, and I did soak that overnight well submerged in the water so let's get that going and uh, we'll get the tuna on the tuna and the wahoo okay so the target temperature we're going for is uh, like 180 it's a little bit high right now but that will reduce when we put the chips on so I got too much charcoal on there to be clear uh, two grills we're gonna be using that grill to recharge this grill when it gets too cool right now that's not an issue all right here we go you ready here we go we're gonna douse a little bit of that fire each time we open it and then we're gonna put our chips on. And we're gonna shut the lid and let it start smoking. Then we're gonna oil this this top grill. That's where our fish is gonna go. Oh, I know it's probably hard to see, but we are right on 180. Oh, that's definitely smoking, right? So every time we open the lid, it's gonna flare up. We need to put a little bit of water to, to temper down that flare. And then you either oil the fish, and this goes for grilling too, you either oil the fish or oil the grill. You never oil both. So, oil the grill, which I cleaned as best I could with a piece of sandpaper. All right, well, well oiled. We're not going to necessarily move this stuff as it's cooking. It's just going to sit right where we place it with some room in between. All right, um, thicker, larger pieces towards the fire. Towards the fr <coughs> front. <clears throat> and we're going to put the dry side down. You know, the side that was on the paper towels is a little bit more, is a little bit wetter. I just take some finagling getting all these on here sometimes. 
Let's move them around a bit. Oh my gosh. You want room in between the um, the pieces. Definitely you want room in between the pieces. Uh, like this. Alright. I think that's going to do it. Maybe like that. Alright. Artfully done, eh? So it's going to be just rounds and rounds and rounds of doing this same thing. Coming out, opening the lid, we're going to pat the surface of them dry, douse the fire, put more chips on every 15 minutes for uh, probably two or three hours. And making sure the temperature doesn't rise too much above 180. That's it. Exciting things, huh? It's going to taste good. and it's been about three hours. It's not exuding any liquid at all. It just got it really kind of hot in here, but it's the last round. If you press on the stakes, they should be quite firm. And it should have a uh, kind of a leathery covering to it. I think that's gonna do it. should come off real easy. Uh oh, oh, I spoke too soon. Yeah, well there it is, three hours, uh, roughly three hours of smoking time. Hardly a chore. And man, I'll tell you what, the, uh, the fish definitely gets better after it's refrigerated. Uh, I just broke a piece off for, uh, from a dear old Mar, and this is spectacular. Like, this is one of the better smoked fish I've ever made. The brine's where it's at, like the smoking, yeah, you can kind of screw that up. You can basically grill it after the brine and it'll turn out, but this is phenomenal. Oh yeah. So I'll cover that, put it in the fridge. I'll make rounds with it tomorrow as I'm going down the shore to work for the construction company, I think. And, uh, yeah, we'll be giving most of that away. That's it. That's how to smoke tuna. Properly. Like, properly how to smoke tuna. Wow, that's good. Being born is a terminal illness. Get the most out of each day, people. You never know when the last one's going to come. That's about it. Go fuck your hat. Good night, good hockey. Cheers. <laughs>